but you know. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, bro. Happy Sabbath. Everybody that uh that tune in. In the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Ingathering, um, it's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. If we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are not in the room, to the saints that are watching in, to the, um, to the bros back here. And, um, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Uh, uh, let's open up to Deuteronomy 16.13. Uh, Talk a little bit about the feast of the in gathering. Sixteen thirteen. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy sixteen verse thirteen. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. <sighs> Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, verse thirteen. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that, thou hast gathered in your corn and your wine. All right, so he said, you're going to observe the Feast of Tabernacles, right? The Feast of Booths or Feast of Ingathering, different names for it. For seven days, after that, you had um, brought in your what? Your corn and your wine. After you brought in your corn and your wine. Let's see what else. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. Thou and thy sons and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. All right, this is a joyful time for us. All right, for everybody come together, we, we, we uh, bring ourselves together and then we, we enjoy the time with one another. Um, and we bring in all our crops, right? So we bring in our wine, we bring in our, our corn, and we start to bring in our carps and we feast with each other. Keep going. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord the Lord God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. All right, book say we should not appear before the Lord empty, all right? That's what all these days are because it's about being fruitful. It's about, it's about offering something to the Most High God, all right? And that's how Yahushua was testified in this day, all right? When he returns, he's going to come back with gifts, all right? He's coming back with gifts, and he's raising people from the dead and making them from their tabernacle something that is a temple at that point, all right? He's taking something that's temporary and making it permanent. All right, and that's how that's how this day testifies of Yahushua. All right, grab uh, grab Leviticus uh, twenty three, thirty nine. <clears throat> Let's talk about the the feast of tabernacles too, but we'll get it from Leviticus. Is Leviticus chapter 23, verse uh, 39. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord seven days. All right. So on the 15th day of the seventh month is the, the beginning of the, the week of ingathering or the week of tabernacles. All right. So that will, that will be the start of it. You know, on that day, you will bring, you'll bring in what? You're going to gather in what? Gather in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days, and the first day shall be a Sabbath, and the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Right? 
So he's saying on that day, bring in all the fruit of the land. So everything you're growing is what it's talking about. Everything that you're growing in your crops, bring it all in. And on that day, that's when you, that's when you bring it, right? And from there, we share with each other, and we 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 have a feast, and we enjoy one another in our company, and uh, glory to the Most High God, all right? But it's important that we bring in the fruit. The Most High God spoke about that through Yahushua. Uh, go to Mark four. This is Mark four. We're gonna actually read pretty much the whole chapter. This is Mark four. Let's start at verse one. Mark 4, what? Verse And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude. So that, gathered unto him a great multitude. Keep going. So that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. Mm -hmm. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. Mm -hmm. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, mm -hmm. and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Mm -hmm. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Mm -hmm. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and, an in and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was all alone, when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him a par the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Now, first of all, before we continue, you have to acknowledge that you had a group of people. The Bible calls them a great multitude of people surrounding. He gave them a parable. The people didn't understand the parable. When it was time and when they were alone, the 12 came to him and they asked him, what was this parable about? And before he answered it, he told them, it's given unto y'all to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but it's not given to the others that are without. It's important to make the distinction from just being a mere follower of Christ, just being somebody who just follows Christ, to being a disciple of the Most High God. That's what we seek. We seek discipleship. We, did, we seek the, 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 the calling that we are learned. And we are obedient to his teachings. Like we understand his teachings, and then we do his teachings. All right. Outside of that, you're not dis you're not disciplined. You're not a disciple. All right. So that's what we want to be, and that separates us. That means that the, the book is revealed to us at that point. A lot of these Christians, the reason why they don't understand the book, because they just are followers of Christ. Right. They acknowledge him. They know he's there, but it's part time for them. All right. They don't they don't keep with the teachings. They don't they don't continue on with it. They just do enough. They hear a word for them to feel good. Oh, they go. You know what I'm saying? I just need a word this weekend. Right? It was a rough week for me. I just need a word. It's just, just a recharge for them just to go into the next week. Right? And that, that'll, that'll stunt your growth in the most high God because it's, all it's going to do is it opens up room for an opportunity for, for deception. And once deception comes in, um, then the truth is blocked from you. All right? So keep going. So he said, he said it's given on to y'all, but not unto them. Let's hear about it. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and uh -huh. hearing they may hear and not understand, uh -huh. lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? Mm -hmm. The sower sows the word. Okay. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. All right. So this, uh, the sower is the preacher, right? Somebody speaking the word, right? And then he said, These are they that are sown by the wayside. So this is what it means for the ones that are sown by the wayside. Hear about it. Where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. All right, so they hear the word, but as soon as they hear, the Most High God sends Satan up down there, and he go ahead and take care of that real quick. All right, so they never actually receive it. All right, as soon as they get it, it's gone. Let's hear about that. 
And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, mm -hmm. who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. All right. Keep going. And have no root in themselves, and some endure but for a time. Afterward, when the affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Right. So he said the one sown on stony ground is like somebody who they hear the word, and then they praise God about that word. They hear that thing, they praise God for it. And then they, they like, they with it, and they understand it and they get it and they feel it but then as soon as things start getting tough because of the word you know what i'm saying family start looking at them like man what you doing and, and, and people start looking at them differently their job may fire them things like that because of how they start to live their life at that point that's when they break because the book is saying it's comparing it to a seed that never took root it started to grow but it never really took root so anything can knock it off the path right let's go to the next one what else we got and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things enter in. Choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Mm -hmm. And so, these are, okay. So, you, so you, he's comparing that one now to the one sown among thorns, is that you have somebody who hear the word, they get the word, but they're not quite dedicated to it. You know what I'm saying? They got a whole lot of other stuff going on, too. A lot of worries in the world. You know what I'm saying? A lot of other stuff they're doing, a lot of deceit. And then that ends up choking out the word and making the word unfruitful. So it's not profitable to them. That just means they never came to obedience, right? They never disciplined themselves according to the word, right? So it choke it out and they become unfruitful. Let's hear about what else. And the care. Oh, okay, sorry. And these are they which are thrown <laughs> on good me. ground. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. All right? So the ones on good soil, those are the ones that obey. Those are the ones that are fruitful. So when it comes time for Yahushua to come back, and the, the commandment for this feast is for him to bring all the fruit. If there ain't no fruit, that means you're getting left. All right? He's only looking for the ones that produce fruit. All right? That's what it's all about for him, is just producing the fruit. Grab, uh, grab Hebrews chapter 6 for me. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. It's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of the Messiah, let us go on unto perfection, not laying, again, uh, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permits. Okay. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were what? made partakers impossible. It's impossible for those who were once enlightened and, right? have, and have tasted of the heavenly gift okay. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Yeah, I heard it. That's the book there. He said, you, you, you think you know God? You know what I'm saying? He said, well, yeah. If you know God, it's impossible for you to turn away and try to come back. That thing ain't happening. Oh, you know God? All right. That's why y'all sure was trying to let them know. It's like, because y'all say y'all see, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, you don't see. Your but since remains. you say you see, your sin remains. I better stop y'all. better stop running y'all darn mouth. The book's sitting there telling you don't know God. You better accept that thing. You right. I ain't never knew him. That's what the book said. Book said you never knew him. Anybody who sins, he said, never see him and never knew him. And you sitting here still trying to say you see. That's why he say You'll see him remain. These people will get it. Eventually, these people will get it. Watch what he say here. For the earth which drinks in the rain that comes up. He said the earth drinks in the rain. And what else happens? And comes if you need something to grow, what you need. I mean, I'm putting something in the ground. I'm showing some seed, right? Some by the wayside. Some hit the stony ground. Some is in the thorns and the thistles. You know what I'm saying? But some is in some good soil. In each one of those scenarios, except for the wayside, something grew at least. 
right? It may not have produced fruit, but something grew. You know what I'm saying? For all of those scenarios for that something grew in, what do you need? You need a little bit of water. You got to have a little bit of water. So you said if the earth start drinking in the water. For the earth which drinks in the rain that comes oft upon it uh -huh. and brings forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receives blessing from God. Right? He said the earth drinks in the rain. And at that point, it brings forth herbs that are meat or appropriate. It's just saying whoever, whoever planted it, once the rain hit it, herbs come out of it, right? Plants come out of it. The type of plants that he planted, right? It's appropriate for the person who planted it. And he said they what from God? It receives blessing from God. That's a blessing from God. Most High God said if you produce fruit, it's a blessing, right? Watch this. But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Right? He said, if it comes back with thorns and thistles, boy, oh, that's, that, that means you unfruitful. Right? If that means you unfruitful. Who, 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 who taught us that first? Who was our first representation of that? Be fruitful. Uh, eat Adam. Adam, right? Adam said, he told Adam, you till the ground, you know what I'm saying? You working that ground, you know what it's going to bring back to you? Thorns and thistles, trying to let them know you were rejected. All right? You were rejected at that point. All right? Grab uh, Matthew chapter 21. All right? That's why the book is telling us, be fruitful. All right? That's why it's so important for us. All right? For us, fruit is, for us, bearing fruit is obeying the most high God. All right? That's how we produce fruit. If we do anything short of that, then we, we risk not being gathered by the Most High God. And instead of being gathered, being punished because we're being rejected. It's a curse. If, if, if we're rejected, that's a curse. That's what Hebrews just told us. All right, this is Matthew chapter 21. Give me verse 18. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon. But it's talking about Yahushua. Yahushua, he is hungry. He walking in the way in the morning. He wanted him a little breakfast, right? So he saw a fig tree, and he said nothing was on it? None was on it. Let's hear about it. But leaves only, and he said unto it, let no fruit go on thee henceforward forever. Right? He looked at the, when it was time for him to get something to eat from this fruit, right? When it was time for him to bring the fruit in, it was nothing on the tree, right? And at that point, he cursed it and said, let what? Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Henceforward forever. He said, don't ever have fruit now. When it's time for me to grab some fruit, and if it ain't no fruit there, I don't want to ever see no fruit from it. That's the curse that we get. Right? If, if at the time and point that Yahushua will find his way back here, and we are not fruitful at that point. Right? Fruitful according to the word of God. He's going to look at us and say, you'll never be fruitful. And that's it. That's done. You're not fruitful. You don't get in. That's period. He told you that. Right? You got to at least be producing 30-fold. He said 30, 60, 100-fold. Right? That's what we're looking for. Grab, uh, grab uh, Matthew 24 for me. Yeah. Some people, they die in their sins. That's exactly that. Not fruitful. You sinning, you're not fruitful, period. Right? If you sin, and that's 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 the seed that's on the that's in, the seed that's in the thorny places, you know what I'm saying? That's that that that's not fruitful at all. That means that you your plant is starting to grow. In all those situations, except for the wayside, a plant grew, right? So understand that it's not saying that you're not growing, you're not doing anything, but just doing anything ain't enough, right? And you have to grow enough to produce actual fruit. I can go plant a lemon tree in my rocks right now, and if something pop out of the ground, that'd be nice. It ain't going to be a lemon. Not right here. Not in no rocks. Something might pop out of the ground. It might, yeah, it might pop out and start to grow. It ain't going to cultivate a lemon tree, though. It's going to be a whole lot of work to get it to be a lemon tree. It's going to take some years for it to be a lemon tree. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't work like that. You have to cultivate this stuff. The Most High God is the only one that's going to cultivate it. Right? This is Matthew chapter 24. Give me verse 29. Watch what he tell us about after the tribulation. He 
Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Uh -huh. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Uh -huh. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what he's about to do after he come in a cloud, uh, cloud with uh, power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together. They're going to do what? He shall send his angels together with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the end of, the he of heaven to the other. He had them pick his fruit. All right? He went out there like, man, it's end gathering time. I got to pick all this fruit. Y'all go over there and go start harvesting all this food from him. Right? He got to bring it into the feast. He said the, the most I got already told him, do not show here up empty. What's going to happen y'all sure show up, he ain't got no fruit? That's crazy. He going to be rejected. He came, he's like, man, go ahead and, uh, y'all go ahead and start gathering up my elect. That's his fruit. Right? Keep going. Now that might be all I want right there, actually. Yeah, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When it's when his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you grab know uh, Second Peter for me. Second Peter chapter one. Parable of the fig tree is telling you you gotta watch for the sign. All right? We know what a fig tree. You know what I'm saying? Not us right now. You know what I'm saying? But our people knew what a fig tree. You know what I'm saying? You, you know how a fig tree supposed to look. He never even tasted a fig. I mean, I ain't like it. I'm trying to get one of these days. I ain't like when I had one. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? That was our thing. You know what I'm saying? You got you a fig. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what a fig tree's supposed to look like different times of the year? I like fig Newton. All right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know when, you, that's supposed to tell you when the seasons are changing. And that's what he's trying to tell you. Like, you know what the fig tree look like. You know what I'm saying? Fig tree look like this. You know what's about to happen. He's like, well, all this stuff I just told you, pay attention to it. Because when you see all this stuff, then you know it's about to happen. When all this become accomplished, you know it's about to happen. Right, keep going. Our, uh, this is uh, uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse one. Watch what he say here. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Yahushua the Messiah, to them that have obtained life precious faith with us through the righteous righteousness of God and our Savior Yahushua the Messiah. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Yahushua our Master. That's right. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, mm -hmm. through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, mm -hmm. whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. All right, so he's letting us know that we have certain promises from the Most High God through the Son, right? That if we obey, and that's not what he said right here, but the implication is that if we obey, that these things belong to us, right? That we can claim these things by faith, right? And he says, due to that, right, he's about to give us instruction to keep it, right? Let's see. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. He said, besides this, right, besides what we already know, still give all diligence, right? You know, this is mine. God gave it to me. Because I have faith that shows in my obedience, right? I'm pure confident, right? He said, and besides that, still add to your faith more diligence, right? Keep going. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, uh huh, and to knowledge temperance. Mm -hmm. Temperance just means you self control, right? Self control. You able to you able to keep yourself in control. You are not losing it, right? Keep going. And to temperance patience. Patience. Right? And being to, patient with people. You ain't, you ain't always, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes people don't move as fast. Now, being, a lot of these times people say we not patient. And you know why they say we not patient? Because we tell them today. Right? Today, turn away from sin. They ain't got nothing to do with patience. I tell you today for the next six years. That's patience. Right? I'm just telling you what the words say. What I'm going to say, what I'm going to say, uh, go ahead and take six years to repent from sin. That's crazy. I can't tell you, I can't tell you, I can't, I can't present to you a plan outside of what God gives. God tell you today, I got to tell you today. Now, if you don't do it today, I'm telling you today again tomorrow. Right? That's what patience is. All right? Keep going. And to patience, godliness. Uh-huh. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Uh-huh. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Uh-huh. Charity is love. Right? Keep going. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren 
nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our master, Yahushua the Messiah. He said, if you continue in those things and continuously throughout your life, add on to your faith with the format that he gave you. He said, you will never be unfruitful. Right? You have one scenario where the most high guy walk up and he don't see no fruit. He going to tell you, but you ain't never going to have fruit. Peter is now telling us, this is what you do to never be without fruit. Right? This is the advice that we need to seek. We need to be ready when the man show back up here. When he send the angels to go pick his fruit. We need to be out there in the field like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and pick me up. Put me in a bundle. You know what I'm saying? Bring me on in to the gathering. All right, otherwise we'll be lost. All right, keep going. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Uh-huh. That's why the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. He said give diligence. It's important to understand what he's saying here. He said give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Not one of us can say, you know what? On this day, at this time, God called me and said it was sure. Right? All of our stuff is based off of faith. All of it. So then we have to look at the book and we have to measure up according to the book. Not according to the brother, not according to my mama. I got to measure up according to the book. Books say do this. I got to do it. Right? And so when I measure up myself, I look and I say, okay, I'm doing what the books say. Now my faith is confirmed. My calling and election is confirmed. He says give diligence to make your calling and election sure so that you're not just sitting there saying, well, I'm saved just because you saved. Right? You're not sure. Right? You're, there's no way that you could be sure outside of God's word. If God is not sitting there telling you, you good then how can you be sure, right? The only way is to take his word and say, this is what he told me to do. This is what I'm doing. Okay, I'm sure, all right? So he's telling us, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Let's hear about it. For if you do these things. Because if you do these things. You shall never fall. You'll never fall, right? He gave us the formula. It's just a matter for us to. Are we, are we taking it serious enough to actually continue to do these things, to continue to improve? Or do we stay stacked and be like, oh, well, I'm good enough, right? And maybe if you're good enough, you know what I'm saying, maybe you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if you obey the most high God and follow his spirit, you know what I'm saying, maybe you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? But maybe you teetering right there on the edge, and maybe something's going to knock you back. Some temptation going to come and throw you off the path, Right? We can't afford that. We have to constantly be improving, constantly be reaching, constantly be going forward in competition. What do you think Paul was talking about when he was like, man, when I box, you got to box like, you know what I'm saying, somebody that got, got some real issues, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm just not throwing aimlessly in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, I'm up here being serious about it. He said, it's as if I'm running in competition for only one prize. Now, we know it's not just one prize. But if you have that mindset, man, I got to outdo everybody, you good. You good, right? This is uh, Matthew chapter 14. It's Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahushua went unto them, walking on the sea. Uh -huh. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they cried out for fear. What else are they going to say? All right, we look at him and laugh at it now. He's like, oh, they thought it was a spirit. That's Yahushua, that's the son of God. Yeah, they didn't, you know what I'm saying? That's, that All they knew is that this is a great man. All right, we can look at the book now. And we know we've been taught, we've been raised in Christianity and all this other stuff. So we know. You know what I'm saying? We know a little bit about, about the man. So we look back and we like laughing at these. They didn't know. All they knew was like, man, this is a great man. And all of a sudden, this is a great man that you thought, I mean, he was just amazing. You ain't never seen no person like this. All of a sudden, now he walking on water. They're like, man, that's a spirit. That's a ghost. You see him messing with this stuff, right? And watch what happened. But straightway, Yahushua spoken to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Mm-hmm. 
And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And who said that? Yeah, Yahushua said, come. And who, who asked him if it bid thee? Peter. Peter? Peter is the one that just gave us that advice, huh? Yeah. Let me show y'all why he got some, he, he got some, uh, he got some, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Confidence. Uh, proof. Evidence. He got proof, evidence. I'm looking for, uh, uh, why he's so sure. He has the right to talk about this subject. What's the word I'm looking for? Clout. Yeah, clout. I'm looking for something else. Whatever. It's about to irritate Hold me. on now. You know what I'm saying? It's a so simple good. word, too. I just can't think of it right now. Uh, I don't know. He down by law. I think <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? He has he has the right to talk about this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show y'all why. All right? So he said, will you bid me to come out? Y'all sure said what to him? Come. Hey, bring your butt on out then, boy. Right? You know, the rest of them was like, man, I ain't, yes, I ain't messing with this man. You know what I'm saying? That's a spirit. Peter's like, oh, that's him? He's like, uh, if it's you, then uh, tell me to come on out too then. You know what I'm saying? He's like, come on. Let's hear about it. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahushua. Mm -hmm. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Master, save me. Mm -hmm. And immediately Yahushua stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? Right? He had faith enough to step out, on the, out in the water. But then when things start happening, the faith went away. That sound like the that sound like the seed that was sown uh sown with the thorns, right? Or on the stony places, All right? We look at these things, things start happening. We have to remain faithful. That's why Peter is telling us, listen, you know what I'm saying? You got it, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, keep at it. Don't stop at it. You know what I'm saying? Just keep at it. He been through things. The man was a fisherman. He wasn't, a, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like he was, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? This was his day job or something. He was just a fisherman. Look how the homie caught him. This is uh, Matthew chapter 4. It's Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. It wasn't like he caught Peter preaching to people. Peter was already in the word, you know what I'm saying, all that. Sure, Peter probably knew the word. You know what I'm saying? I had no doubt about it. Well, it wasn't like that was his profession. Look how he found the man. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse, uh, what did I say, 17? Yeah. From that time, Yahshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh-huh. And Yahshua, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, and Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, mm -hmm. casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Okay. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Mm -hmm. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Give me First Peter chapter 3. All he did, walk up to him. He did, all they're doing is they're doing, they're doing their job. They're fishermen. He walks up to him. He's like, yo, follow me. Right? Don't make a mistake. They've seen him before. All right, they've been hearing about him. All right, John the Baptist has been telling people, like, listen, this one right here. All right? That's a little bit after he got baptized. So it wasn't like he was a nobody. Don't, don't make it seem like they just followed anybody because y'all shouldn't do that. All right? Y'all shouldn't just walk up and just follow anybody. They knew, they knew, they had some information on the man. They were definitely intrigued by him. All right? But that's what he was doing. His life, he is fishing. That's what I do. He had to learn how to add on to his faith. This is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse uh, 14. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be thou troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in the Messiah. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for the well-doing than for evil-doing. For the Messiah also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, mm -hmm. but quickened by the Spirit. Mm-hmm. 
by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, mm -hmm. which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a per preparing was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Yahushua the Messiah, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Right? All the authorities and powers are made subject unto him. That's why when he come back, you're going to hear him yell. All right? You're going to hear that trumpet blow. Then you're going to hear the angels go pick. I mean, you're going to hear him tell the angels to go pick up his fruit. Because they're subject unto him. Right? Peter already knows this. That's why he's telling us, listen, continue to add. Don't get comfortable. Don't get stagnant. Continue to add. Continue to push. Continue to go. All right? Continue to move forward. Otherwise, you won't be fruitful. Or you risk not being fruitful. Right? right? But if you continue to add, he's like, man, I guarantee you, you'll never be unfruitful. And you'll never fall. All right? That's what we look for. That's the stability that we look for. Grab me, uh, grab me John chapter 15. We can start at verse 1. This is John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prune, he purges, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. So you understand what he's saying right there? Like you start to give out fruit, you know what I'm saying? He going he gonna to clean you up to where you give out even more fruit. All right? That's what we look for. All we have to do is just take the steps that he told us to take. Most high God already say, I provided the path. I gave, I gave you the directions to do it. You good. You know what I'm saying? You just start doing what I tell you to do. Don't worry about it. Help is on the way. Our problem is we don't start taking the steps. We just do what we're comfortable with. Right? Anything that make us uncomfortable, that take us out of our comfort zone, then it's just like, eh, it ain't worth it to us no more. All right? All right. Keep going. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Uh-huh. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept, no more can you except you abide in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. For without me, you can do nothing. He says no way to abide fruit, uh, to, uh, to bear fruit without him. You have to abide in him. And abide in him just means remain in him or be in him. All right? If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Right? So if a man does not abide in him, he already told you you can't produce fruit unless you abide in him. So if a man doesn't abide in him, that makes him unfruitful. If you're unfruitful, you get rejected. Right? And he's telling you right here, you're getting burned. Right? Now let these people make a fool out of you. Keep going. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Uh-huh. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. You gotta bear fruit. That's how you glorify God, right? Keep going. So shall you be my disciples. Mm -hmm. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue. Notice he didn't say Christians. So shall you be my disciples. You bear fruit. Bear fruit is obedience. I'll prove that out to you right now, too. Keep going. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Mm -hmm. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Told you. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Told you. It's all about obedience, right? You abide in him, you produce fruit. If you can keep his commandments, you abide in him, just like he kept the Father's commandments and abided in the Father, right? Keep going. These things have I spoken unto you that you might joy, that my joy might remain in you mm -hmm. and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I loved you. Mm -hmm. Greater love has no man than this, than the man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Mm -hmm. Henceforth I called you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord does. 
But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Mm -hmm. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. Right. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He said that your fruit should remain. That has to be our goal. Our fruit got to hold on until it's time for the man to come. Once he show up, he can pick some fruit. Because eventually, it's only the book, the book only tells us about seven trumpets now. All right? So we got a limit on what we hear. You're going to hear some stuff happening. When that last trumpet go, that thing over at that point. Stuff changes immediately. All right? If our fruits are not appropriate in enough time, then that's it. And we don't know when that thing going to go. It's important for us to be ready for the end gathering. Right? We have to be ready. That's what this day is about. That's what this week is about for us. Just reminding us to prepare for the man when he comes back here and when he begins to gather in all the people. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Okay. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. So the notice when it Adam says was it was sown a natural body. Sown is, they're talking about planted, right? So a seed is planted a certain way. And when a seed comes up, it becomes a different body, right? So that's what he's trying to compare us to. When we go in... We're sown a natural body, just like what we have now, right? When we die, we go into the ground that way, right? But he raises us up a different type of body, right? So just like a plant. He'll explain it. Keep going. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. And as is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. He said, neither does cor uh, corruption inherit incorruption. Right? There's no way that... that incorrupt. From something that's wrong, that's not right, that's not perfect, ends up inheriting perfection. Right? Can't happen. Has to be, has to die, and has to be remade. All right? Let's see. That's exactly why we gotta die. We corrupt. That's what he's talking about. When he's talking about sowing the sowing a natural body, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about death. Right? We're getting buried. That's what he's relating it to. Right, and he says when he raises you back up, you become something totally different at that point. All right, it's like a seed. Keep going. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. He said, "I show you a mystery. We all might not sleep, but every one of us gonna be changed. When is this gonna happen? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. That's the last trumpet. He said, in a twinkling, real quick. Flash your eye can twinkle. That thing. Last trump gonna blow, and then that's it." He said, we all going to be changed. Let's hear about it. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Mm -hmm. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. Mm -hmm. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord, Yahushua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right? We have the trust in that. Right, because that is what offers us uh, the, the ability. Most High God is offering us the ability to become incorruptible. Only thing we got to do is obey the man. 
always abounding in the work of the Lord. All right? Not in our own works that we call the work of the Lord either. We got to look at the book. Anything we, anytime you're talking about God, anything, you're talking about the God of this book, anytime you're trying to talk about what he wants and what he needs, that thing got to come from this book. Can't come from how you feel. Right? It can't come from what makes you feel good or, or what God said to your spirit privately. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Got to come from the book. He's going to give it to you just like he gives it to everybody else. Right here in the book. The right? spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophet. That's right. right. What he talking about, the brother talking about right there, he's saying, if I'm a prophet and I say something and I heard it from God, it got to be subject, right? In other words, it got to fall in line with the other prophets who have also said that they heard something from God. So there's no way that one prophet going to tell you, oh, don't worry about it, the temple going to be good. Then the next prophet going to tell you, uh, no, nah, the temple going to be destroyed, right? Those two things are not going to go, not talking about the same period. It's not going to happen, right? We look at, we have to be able to line ourselves up with the prophets. The way that we line ourselves up with the prophets of old is we look into the book. We use those prophets to then judge the rest of the prophets. Somebody else get to run in their mouth, this is what God told me, this is what God want for me, this is what God want for your life, all that. That they need to line up with the book. God speaks right? in a similar to the other prophets. That's right. right? If, you, if you... If you have somebody tell you something good, it, I mean, a prophet just prophesied some good stuff about you, that's fine. That's fine. Don't, don't go calling them no liar, this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? As long as that thing line up the book, you ain't got to call them no liar. That's fine. Accept it. Say, bless you. I hope, I, hope, I hope it's just as you say it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the prophets of old, they came talking about disaster, Famine. pestilence, war. war. You know what I'm saying? Famine. You know what I'm saying? They came talking about bad stuff. It was negativity. He said, let the prophet that come talking about some good stuff. When that happened? Let him be a prophet. Let him be known as a prophet after it come to pass. You say something good about me? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get a new house. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, brother. I hope it. I hope, oh, the most I got make it just like you say it is. Right? Oh, we make it just like you say it is. But uh, I'll call you a prophet after it happens. <laughs> Until then, I appreciate the kind words. Right? Somebody come telling you something bad. You need to turn from sin in seven days or Las Vegas is going to get shot up again. Your butt need to turn from sin. I mean, worse come the worst. You turn from sin, right? You turn from sin and Las Vegas don't get shot up. Worse, worse come the worst. What you going to say? You know what I'm saying? You, you can't do nothing but bless God even if it was a complete lie. What you going to do? You turn from sin. All you going to do is bless God. These people tell you something bad and they're telling you to do something good in, in, uh, uh, for it. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to do. That's what the prophets of old were talking about. They had warning. You're going to darn see it when they talk about it, too. You might not see it real quick. That thing coming, though. Write that thing down. Grab, uh, grab Revelation 11. We'll get up out of here. If Revelation 11, uh, 15. Talk about these trumpets. Paul just told us about the last trump. The twinkling of an eye, he said. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of, of our master and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are and was and are to come. Because you have taken to thee your great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry and thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that thou should give reward unto your servants the prophets. And to the saints and to them that fear your name. Small and great. And should destroy them which destroy the earth. Alright. This is the last trump. It's the seventh trumpet. The last one the Bible tells us about. And this is what it says going on right here. Keep going. And the temple of God was opened in open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. All right, everybody looking for the, the, the ark of the covenant right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, some people say it's right. in Ethiopia, some people say it's here, somebody's book just told you. Heaven gonna open up and they gonna see it. It's a sign. I remember Tony asked me that like a long time ago. Took him straight to that thing. I was like, well, books ain't that thing in heaven. Yeah, it's a son. You know what I'm saying? The son of the most high God. Right? 
he can change the covenant. He can change the proof of who the priest is. You know what I'm saying? He can change the book, the word. Right? All of it is encapsulated in him. He's going to come out of that thing after the last trump. The whole world become his. All the nations become his. Right? And he's setting up shop. New Jerusalem coming out, he's setting up shop. Everybody, you want to hear the word, you coming to him. A lot of people don't know it's going to be a remainder of people. It's going to be a residue of people still here, too. They're going to have to come up and learn the word from them. Or they're going to be cursed. Right? Because they ain't producing fruit. They're going to have to come up with offering. What do you think? They're going to come empty-handed? No, oh, please. They're going to come with all, all types of fruit in hand. Y'all sure didn't come empty-handed. Ain't nobody else going to come empty-handed. Right? We just got to make sure that we in his hands when he come back. Otherwise, we just left out. We get punished and rejected just like the rest of these people. All right? We have an opportunity, and the Most High God gave us a mind to see fit that we tune in or that we come and that we show up or that we know and all these different things. This stuff ain't no accident. A lot of times, a lot of times, people clicking through videos on YouTube, man, stuff ain't no accident. Most High God see fit for you to hear the truth. This stuff is scarce out here. This stuff is scarce. It ain't like, it, you can't find nobody telling the truth. About anything, not just the Bible. You can't find nobody telling the truth about anything. You hear some truth and stuff that actually makes sense. You hear these people telling you, you know what I'm saying? Well, the Bible, you know, got multiple interpretations. You, to get them lies out of here, and you start actually having somebody that can make it make sense, that's not an accident. You call the number, you do whatever you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Let's figure this thing out. Let's make sure we get the truth, and let's make sure we obey. Be ready for when the man come back here. All right? That's what we do when we celebrate the, the, the tabernacle. Y'all be good. All right, y'all, y'all peace. Let's pray out.